Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Chukubu Igem Ogwa, and today we're going to be talking about how to install Stable Diffusion locally on your PC. And let's get this going. With Stable Diffusion, the first thing you're going to need is Python 3.10. You do not want Python 3.11 because it'll start to give you a bit of problems. So, what would happen is that you would come here and you would scroll all the way to the bottom and you're going to click Windows Installer 64 bit. From the top, you can pretty much just click on that. And then it'll be like install now, pretty much right there, app data, da 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 da. You can pretty much install regularly, but you need, uh, I'm telling you, you need to click this, add Python 3.10 to path. If you don't do that, this whole thing is not gonna work out because it needs to be on your whole computer. So once you've done that, you will be good to go. And then we'll be on to the next step. Then you're gonna come over here to get, remember the link for everything will be in the description below. But then you're gonna come over here for Git and you're gonna click 64 bit Git for Windows setup. Do not download the 64 bit Git Windows Portable. I made the mistake of doing that and it will not work the same, my friend. So make sure that you click this. And again, it'll go to your downloads. You click on that and then you're gonna go through it. Now, the Git installation is actually very simple you just click next to everything so we're not really going to go through that and now all we have to do is create a folder so what we're going to do create new see the reason why we're creating this folder is because we need to put automatic 1111 in this bad boy right that's where the stable diffusion is going to be and you're going to be wondering how do we do that check this out so you're going to click open right go to open and then here in the bar you're going to type cmd that's going to open up the command line, but not just open up the command line, it's going to open us up in the directory that we need to be in. So now that we're in that directory, we're going to use this. You're going to copy this git clone link right here. You're gonna copy it, then you're gonna to come to the command prompt and you're going to just put it right here, okay? Now that we're gonna git clone this, it'll clone the GitHub repository where Stable Diffusion is at right into our folder and that's how we're going to get stable diffusion so just click enter and boom now it's done so the beauty is that now right here in automatic 1111 folder you see the stable diffusion web ui you're going to click into that folder then you're going to scroll down here to web ui.user and it's a batch file a windows batch file you see that all you got to do is double click that bad boy once you've double clicked it, hold on. Once you've double clicked it, it will start running the Stable Diffusion Web UI. And the first time that it happens, it might take about 10 minutes for everything to get loaded. But once it's done, you'll be right on your way. So let's skip ahead to when that comes up and we'll be on our way. And boom, Stable Diffusion. So now we have Stable Diffusion live and ready to go. And what's nice is that it already comes installed with a model to use. Now, what is a model? A model is simply a template that your prompts are going to be based on. And this V15 pruned immediately save tenses model is a really good model. That's pretty much uh, like a very stable version of stable diffusion for anyone to use. But there are way better models out there. But you know, it doesn't stop us from trying our first ever prompt. So let's say um, a nice chair in the middle of a palace photo realistic wow that's nice look at that nice that's actually pretty nice now it is missing a few details we can make it more detailed but i think the overall outcome is pretty good now that we've made such a wonderful picture there are many other things that you can do with this and many of that will come from adding more models to your program and one of the biggest models that you're going to want to add to your program is going to be um sdxl which is stable diffusion xl extra large basically which is um just a much more beef version of what you get by default when you have stable diffusion and all you would do is that you would come here and download the safe tensors here this one right here you're going to download it it's about a six gigabyte file so definitely make sure that you have space in fact in general when it comes to stable diffusion try to make sure that you have space so that you can hold all the files um for it and once it's downloaded you should be able to navigate over to your downloads folder and you'll see it right there, which will be SDXL. Now you can copy and paste this over or you can open a new tab and kind of move it over there. So what I'll do is that I'll actually open up this automatic 11 tab. I'm gonna navigate into the stable UI models, then stable diffusion. And then all you're gonna do is you're just gonna take this, drag and drop it over there. And now once that's done, or you can X out both. 
and with your web UI still up, I mean, you could have also closed it and restarted it. It's, it's to whatever you like. And you see it's not there right now. But once you refresh this, you'll see that it's there. And then you can always just click on SDXL. And boom, you have this ready to use. Now, we'll be honest. This wasn't ready immediately. I did have to restart Stable Diffusion in order to get this, but now we do have this and you know, we can type in the same prompt like we did last time. And wow, would you look at that? I mean, uh, the details aren't what I would like for it to be, but definitely some potential here. There's definitely an art to prompting. You would want to have added negative prompts and all these different things, but that's a whole nother video. But if you'd like that, leave it in the comments down below and I'll definitely make it for you. That's what I'm here for. But it's not just this model. We can even try one more. We could try this ghost mix model, which is a pretty nice model. You know, you can download this model, right? And as it's downloading, what's happening is that you can actually go through these sites and this is an, a censored image, but this may contain nudity or gore of some sort. But as you can see, this model would help you generate images similar to these. And what's even beautiful about Civit AI is that you can actually take these little, if you go right here to where this eye is, you will click this eye and it shows you all the prompts that was used to create these images. So what's going to happen is as soon as we're done downloading the model, we're going to import it into Stable Diffusion, then use these prompts and see what we get. And just like before, all you would do is drag and drop this over into the models folder where you found it in the Stable UI folder that we showed you earlier. Then you can just come back to where it was already running. It's perfectly fine. You can reload it, put Ghost Mix in there, and then it'll show itself. Boom, now we have Ghost Mix ready to go, and we're gonna take one of these command prompts. I like this picture. You can just copy the prompt from here, go back, you would paste it in there. Now this is a much more descriptive prompt, so you can definitely expect some better results. And then we take this negative prompt as well. And negative prompting is simply what you're telling the uh, image generator what you don't want, right? So now you just put that bad boy in and let's see what we get. Ooh, not bad, not bad at all. This is very, very interesting, very, very cool. Uh, exactly what we expected. So that's how models and images would work. So that's pretty cool. Now, there are a few settings that you're gonna to wanna to know because these are settings that I need myself just to make this work. Number one, you're gonna come into the batch file. So what would happen is that you would actually um, X out state. Well, actually, let me download this first because it's not a bad image. We're going to actually, you would actually X this out, right? And then you would also, in order to close Stable Diffusion, all you got to do is X out the command that's in, that's, that it's in. And there are a few things that you're going to want to do. So we're going to make our way back into that Stable Diffusion uh, folder where we have the batch file. You're going to right click it, show more options, and then edit, right? Now for me, by default, it goes straight to Notepad++, but some of you guys may have a different code editor and that's perfectly fine, but it just needs to be edited. So first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do, um, pretty much everyone is going to want dash dash xformers. You're gonna put it right here next to set command line underscore ARGS. Dash dash xformers literally just speeds up the generation process. So if you're on PC, you're gonna want dash dash xformers. That won't, this command won't work on Mac, but it will work on PC. Now the second command you're going to want to put in is either med VRAM or low VRAM. Right here I'm using low VRAM because that's the only way I can get stable diffusion to work consistently for me. You could also try med VRAM and to explain what these are, see if you have a GPU that's under 8 gigabytes and if you don't know how to check that, all you have to do is come here to where your desktop is, you're going to right click the display, you're going to click display settings, you're going to come to advanced display. Now I am on Windows 11 so if you're on Windows 10 it may be a little different but you're going to come to advanced display, then you're going to go to display adapter properties and it will literally show you you see I have an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 6 gigabytes so my GPU has 6 gigabytes of VRAM normally you want minimum 8 mm, optimally 16 or above but I have 6 gigabytes so I don't have a lot of VRAM and so in order to accommodate people like me you would need to put in these arguments either dash dash low VRAM or dash dash med VRAM and what it does is that it tells Stable Diffusion to use less VRAM to make these images. Med VRAM tells them to use less 
low VRAM tells them to use the least amount of VRAM to make these images. And I have a six gigabyte, so I need them to use the least amount of VRAM. So med VRAM wasn't good enough for me. I had to use low VRAM. And another one that you could use is theme dark which is pretty cool actually. Matter of fact, um, I'll actually just save the file and, every, and anytime you finish editing this file, you're going to want to save it. So make sure that you save it. Now that it's saved, all you got to do is come back here. You're going to relaunch this. And since I have theme dark, you're going to notice, whoa, I'll let you see it for yourself. And you can see right here, launching web UI with arguments, dash, dash, Xformers, low VRAM and theme dark. So boom, now it's no longer bright white in your face. You get a nice cooler, lower temp, darker theme for your eyes that many people are going to appreciate. And normally another recommended one would have been auto launch. But the thing is that as you've been seeing, I don't need to do anything extra to open it up. Now with all the new updates, um, Stable Diffusion uh, Web UI can just launch on its own. You nor What used to be the case is that you would have to take this HTTP right here and copy it into your, um, you'd have to take it and copy it into one of your browsers, like let's say right here, and then you would put it here and that's how you would get Stable Diffusion. But we don't need to do that anymore because it just pretty much auto launches on its own. But if for whatever reason yours is not auto launching, you could always go into the batch file one more time, click edit, and then you could also put auto launch. But I won't need to do that. So it won't be there for me. And that's how you download Stable Diffusion locally on your PC. Listen, if this video was of any help to you, remember to take out your gun and shoot the like button, make it blue. It would really be appreciated and it helps the channel grow. And take some time to subscribe as well if you want more AI content moving forward. So thank you so much for everything. Your man is out.